Welcome to the Evidence-Based Marketer, a podcast focused on the science of marketing with a special emphasis on financial services. Whether you're looking to grow your business or provide a better client experience, we focus on how you can use data and research and time-tested strategies to be a more effective marketer. Did you ever feel as a professional that you're just sort of swimming in the sea of sameness, that everybody else who's doing what you do is doing more or less the same thing, and certainly your clients can't tell you apart. In a lot of professions, this is a real problem, and consumers regard their professionals as being essentially the same and providing the same kind of services, saying the same things, and this is particularly true in in financial services. So the big challenge is, how do you stand out? That's why this we're going to focus today on creating your value proposition, your mission statement, and why it's so important. I'm William Chettle, Director of Experience and Engagement with Symmetry Partners. I'm Andrea Loyne, Digital Marketing Strategist here at Symmetry Partners. And there are differences between mission statements and value propositions and vision statements. And there's a whole bunch of these things out there. And, and we're going to use them interchangeably for our purposes today, though there are, are subtle differences. Uh, a mission statement really is a bit more aspirational, um, you know, like we want to provide the or create the greatest ice cream in Connecticut. That's a that's an aspirational mission statement. A value proposition is more what you do for your your clients. Like we create tasty ice cream in Connecticut. That would be a, a value proposition. So it, it is absolutely critical, you know, whether we're talking about mission statement, value proposition, that you're able to communicate what makes you different very clearly to your clients and prospects. And the evidence suggests this can have a huge impact on your business. If we look at financial services, there's a fascinating study done that. Financial advisors with a mission statement, with a value proposition, had significantly higher asset growth, lower client turnover, and more clients. And it's not because having this is a magic bullet, as we've said again and again, (laughs) no magic bullets in marketing. But it is a very useful thing because it helps your clients and prospects understand clearly what you do and the benefit of working with you. It makes you more referable because it's very easy to, for a client to say, hey, this is what my advisor does for me or this is what my <laughs> provider does for me. And it helps your staff really understand what's kind of the, the cohesive purpose behind your firm and the value that you're providing to your clients. Yeah, and there was a study that was put out that showed advisors that had a documented you know, ideal client persona and their clear client value proposition attracted more new clients and assets in 2019, 28% more new clients to be exact, and 45% more new assets. And, and I think one of the things that's really important there is that we, we talked about the, the client value proposition, but also the ideal client persona, and we'll be mm-hmm. doing other podcasts on this on this as well. But you, you got to understand not only the value you provide, but who you're providing it to. Right. If you have a niche that you work with, you want to make sure that when people see your marketing, they know that that is your niche. They know that you are the you know the one that is targeting what they need and how you know how you can help them. Yeah, and, and you know a good value proposition is not excellent advice for everybody. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> or- <laughs> and a target market is not rich people with a pulse. <laughs> You can hone in a little bit more. There are lots of benefits to having a clear you know, value proposition and that you can clearly articulate your value. It gives you an identity. Uh, you know, it shows the people that you're talking to who you are and what you're about. It can attract talent for you. So attract new employees who believe the same thing. Because if you hire an employee who doesn't believe in what you're doing, it, it's not going to go well. Uh, it can guide the culture of your firm at, once you're there. And you want to make sure that everyone in your office can articulate your value so that they can not only when they answer the phone, they know what your value is, but as clients are coming through the door, they do as well. And it can improve performance of you know your employees and of your relationships with your clients. It can build a community. And it helps when you're trying to envision the future, a client's future with you if they understand your value and you know the future of your employees as well. And then you want to align behaviors. You want to make sure that you're working with clients that you know, have the same kind of value you do or the mission that you do. And then you want to make sure everybody knows so that they can refer you. So make sure that in client meetings, you're reminding people what it is that you do and what your value is, because those clients are going to go out and refer you. And if they can't articulate your value, you're not going to get the referral. 
and you know, I, I think it's interesting to look at some examples from the uh, from the world at, at large. So let's just take Nordstrom's to give customers the most compelling shopping experience possible. And, and I love this because it's very aspirational uh, and, and it is very clear what they're trying to do. Uh, Tesla to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. <laughs> now, what's interesting about that is you don't see the word car anywhere in there. Nowhere, you wouldn't even know. But their focus is is larger than that. You know, they have a, a, a battery plant or battery plants that they're working on. They've got cars. They've got spaceships. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you know, it, it it is larger than 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 just cars. And I love the fact that it is focused on something that would not honestly be easily apparent if you were just thinking about them as a car company. Southwest Airlines to be the world's most loved, most efficient, and most profitable airline. So what's interesting about that is that it's actually trying to deal not just with clients, but even shareholders and, and employees. And so it's really trying to appeal to all the, the stakeholders uh, at, at Southwest. Yeah, as an employee of Southwest, I think I would want to know that they they don't just want to make their customers happy. They want to you know, make sure that they're making money in the end of the day, too. Mm-hmm. So we referred to the Sea of Sameness at the beginning of this, and the fact is that if we look at financial <laughs> services, two-thirds of, of investors think financial advisors say exactly the same things. They do the same things. They say the same things. And, and it's not surprising um, when you look at some surveys and you ask financial advisors, what sets you apart from others? The number one answer, and this is 76% of advisors say this, that sets them apart from everybody else is the ability to understand client needs and objectives. <laughs> Just and, like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but that, that's that's table stakes, right? Mm-hmm. That's what you're supposed to do in that in that in that job. And so, you know, a value proposition should generally not be what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, well, second one on that list is client services at 72%. And again, you want to make sure you're servicing your clients. No matter what. <laughs> yeah, and almost everyone I've ever talked to in any profession says we have great client service. <laughs> Statistically, that, of course, is impossible, but everybody says they have great client service. Uh, but even if you look at the top financial advisors in this country, the, the Barron's top 100 uh, advisors, this is a, kind of an award given to what Barron's Magazine regards as the best advisors in the country, um, they all have kind of the same messaging on their websites. You know, many of them say that their value is comprehensive portfolio management, or they understand needs and expectations. <laughs> uh, again, this is kind of what you'd expect from any financial right. advisor, good, <laughs> good, bad, or indifferent. Well, and th- that brings you into, you know, what should your great value proposition or mission statement reflect? Well, it should show who you are, for uh, first and foremost, what you do and a lot of people miss this next one of who you serve. You want to make sure your value proposition clearly shows that niche you work with. What outcome do you provide? And don't make it long-winded. You want it to be very short, very succinct, and very understandable. So what does that mean? Don't use jargon. Don't. We've seen some that were like a page long. <laughs> They're not reading through that. <laughs> yeah. um, but you want to use you know everyday language that everyone can can understand. You want to make it transparent. There should not be a secret sauce to what you do. You want them to know you're there and what you do and how you do it. You know, there's no magic bullet. And you want to earn that next conversation. That's a piece that I think a lot of people forget about or don't think of when they're writing this. You want to, your value proposition to encourage someone to pick up the phone and call you, to work with you, to refer you. You want to make sure there is a next action and outcome from your value proposition. Yep. And I think you've got some examples for us from the, the, the great wide world out there. <laughs> I do. So our mission is to help you reach your highest financial potential so you can enjoy the rich experiences of family, friendships, business, and career. That's a, that's a great it's, statement. Sounds nice. Um, you know, aspirational for sure. Um, but who, who do they serve? It does not show them who they serve. It doesn't show the outcome you provide, right? You want them to enjoy this richness, but how do they get there? Um, so really make sure you hone in on that niche if you have one, who you serve, and, and really who you are. <laughs> um, and, you know, I there's at Charleston Investment Advisors, uh, we're committed to helping our clients make smart decisions about their wealth so then it can do as much good as possible. Now, I confess that I wrote that many years ago, and I think I did a good job, but I know I missed a couple of areas. <laughs> you did. Um, the, the, you know, who they are and 
who do you serve? You know, the, the number one thing is, you know, you don't serve the masses. You actually have a specialty that you focus in on. And in this case, they, they actually do. They, they work with professional women, amongst others, and also families that have children with special needs, which would have been so easy to add to that. Yep. And that is a, a, a very important niche that people looking want to know you understand that there is a need there that may be outside the norm. And then the final one is a really good one. Uh, Velocity Advisors is a financial services firm committed to providing a client-centric experience delivered by local and knowledgeable financial professionals. We're here to provide families, individuals, and businesses with the financial protection and services to meet their financial needs through education, empowering them to make solid financial decisions. It checks all the boxes. Um, And, you know, the big one is that, that we're here to provide families, individuals, and businesses they're really honing in, not very specifically, but on the people that they want to help to serve. Yeah, and offering financial protection and services to meet financial needs. I, I, they did a great job here, uh, but what you can't uh, see on a podcast is they actually have several typos in their in their value prop, and it's been up there for several years. So Velocity Advisors, if you're listening, <laughs> please, please, please fix the typos on your website. Yes, that's it. definitely. If you have a great mission statement, have someone else read it. And then put it on your website and make sure, you know, uh, we have a a graphic designer here at Symmetry who we have to send stuff to all the time because she catches everything. And we want to make sure we're not putting stuff up there with typos and, you know, extraneous things we don't need. So what do you do with your your mission statement or your value proposition? I think the most important thing is put it on on, on your website. Put it on the homepage of your website where people can see it clearly. And I've said this before, but an important thing is make sure it's above the fold. Don't make people scroll down to find out what you do because they may not. They, uh, you know, people spend, what is it, five to six seconds really, you know, analyzing your On the the content, the main content on your homepage. Yep. And you want them to know in those five to six seconds what you do and what you bring to the table. If they have to scroll down for that, they might not stay on your site for it. Yeah, and I would just not even put it on separate links, you know, mm-hmm. very deep in the site. I think that's that's a missed opportunity. I think it's also important to put it on social media that it, that you know the about section of LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. It should be there. It should be there front and center. Uh, you might think about even doing a, a a short video about it and putting that on YouTube and maybe on your site as well. And it's something to I think when you're meeting with clients and particularly prospective clients, share it with them. Let them know. Say this is this is what I do. Um, because it's really, again, we know from statistics and, 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 and a lot of surveys that this is something that is important and that actually helps you, helps you grow. It does. And just to add to, to where to put it, um, you know, your personal LinkedIn profile, there is a section where you can put what you do and it should be there. If you are, you know, on LinkedIn as a financial advisor, you need to make sure that your value prop is the first thing in your section, uh, your about section on your pers- personal LinkedIn page. So we actually have some some tools here at Symmetry that can help you. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will, I guess we'll link to these in, in, in our site, theevidencebasedmarketer.com, if you wanted to, to d- dive in. Uh, the first one and the most important one is our unique positioning statement a guide. It's a workbook. It allows you to kind of work through this process. We've done it with literally at this point, hundreds of advisors, <laughs> very easy to do. And it, 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 even if you're not a financial advisor, you can use this tool. It's a great tool for a, any professional to create your, your, your value proposition. And if you're a financial advisor and you complete the workbook, give us a call. We're happy to walk through it with you and help you to really craft this mission statement to make sure that you're getting off on the right foot with it. Another tool we have is our growth plan. And the growth plan is, it's a great way for putting together a marketing plan or a strategic plan. And part of that is understanding your ideal client and the value you provide to them. And that actually helps you create your, your mission statement, your value proposition. And one thing I would just say is don't sweat the words. I know so many people when they're trying to do this, they spend hours looking at the sources and debating, should it be happy or glad? Mm-hmm. Look, everybody would love to have something that was beautiful and memorable but the actual words don't matter so much as what's behind the words and the intent. And so as long as it's, you know, spelled correctly and there's no <laughs> typos, what's more important is that actually all the things that Andrew talked about reflecting who you are, what you do and how you help people. Uh, but I would say one thing to think about uh, if you don't want to necessarily do all this work right now and are adverse to filling out workbooks, here's a very simple exercise you can do. Go to your best clients. 
and ask the, the ones who've given you referrals in the past and ask them this very simple question. In the past, when you referred me, what did you say? And they will give you the answers. They will say, you know, I said, did you provide comprehensive service? You help people sleep at night. Uh, you're very caring and whatever, whatever it is. And that's probably a great place to start because yeah. if it's reson if it's, it's words from your best clients and obviously it resonated with, with referrals. So that's probably at least the, the, the core of the value that you provide yep. framed by your clients. And if you don't have a niche that you work with or you don't think you do, take a look at your clients, take a look at what they do. And I'm, sh I'm pretty sure you're going to find that you have a niche in there. You didn't even know you had. Yeah. You, know, you probably even have, have several and it's, I've, worked with a number of financial advisors who were surprised to learn <laughs> <laughs> that they actually had large active niches that they weren't even really aware of. But it, it, it's it's hard in any, any business to step back a little bit. And it's always easier when you're looking in from the outside to see more clearly sometimes um, what is not as clear when you're in it. True. Well, thank you so much for joining us and learning more about the importance of having a value proposition and a mission statement. And uh, until next time, wish you well. I'm William Chettle. I'm Andrea Lloyd. Thanks for listening. And thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Evidence-Based Marketer from Symmetry Partners. If you have any questions, suggestions, or would like more information, please visit us at theevidencebasedmarketer.com. Symmetry Partners LLC is an investment advisory firm registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The firm only transacts business in states where it is properly registered, excluded, or exempted from registration requirements. No one should assume that future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, product, or non-investment related content made reference to directly or indirectly in this material will be profitable. As with any investment strategy, there is the possibility of profitability as well as loss due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws. The content may not be reflective of current opinions or positions. Please note the material is provided for educational and background use only. Moreover, you should not assume that any discussion or information contained in this material serves as the receipt of or as a substitute for personalized investment advice. Please note that nothing either stated or implied on this podcast is intended to be compliance or legal advice regarding your marketing program.